All right, I just thought I would film myself working through this test review for chapter five on trigonometry. I'm going to do the ones at the beginning uh, a little bit faster because I think they're simpler and spend more time on the more complicated issues. So our first skill was changing between radians to degrees and degrees to radians. You just have to know the formula. So the formula from degrees, and we want radians, is to multiply by pi over 180. And I'm going to reduce this without a calculator. So that would be 31 over 18. Both are divisible by 10. And we leave the pi. So negative 155. The process is the same whether it's positive or negative times pi over 180 and put that into my calculator and do the reducing and I leave the pi out when I do the reducing. So I'm just putting a negative 155 divided by 180, math enter enter, and I get negative 31 pi over 36. Now to go from radians to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi and uh, reduce the fractions and your pies will cancel out. So 7 thirds times 180 is 420 degrees. And do the same thing for a negative angle. Multiply by 180 over pi. The pies cancel. Negative 4 ninths times 180, that's going to be negative 80 degrees. Now, when I'm looking at an angle, I want to state the quadrant that it lies in. So I am going to find a coterminal angle first because it's easier for me to visualize this angle by knowing what it is as a positive angle. So I'm going to add 360 and I get 75 degrees. And I know that everything between 0 and 90 is in quadrant 1. So that's going to be in quadrant 1. And then to find one more terminal angle with it, I'm going to go negative 285 minus 360, and I get negative 645. Um, negative 3 fifths pi, that is in radians, so to find a coterminal angle with that, I'm going to go with adding 2 pi, and to, to get the final answer for that, I'm just going to do a quick fraction problem. So 2 pi, 2 is the same as 10 fifths, if I'm getting a common denominator. So that's positive 7 fifths pi. And so that is going to be in quadrant 3. And then if I want to get another coterminal angle, negative 3 fifths pi, I'm going to subtract 2 pi. And I'm going to rewrite 2 pi as 10 pi over 5, so that's negative 13 pi over 5. To change into DMS notation, you guys showed me a method for using your calculator to do that, so I will just um, run through how to do it without a calculator, but if you're using your calculator, you have a different method. So I'm multiplying my decimal times 60 because there are 60 minutes in a degree and I get 52.5. Then I take the 0.5 and I multiply that times 60 and that tells me how many minutes there are. So 56 degrees, 52 minutes, and 30 seconds. Um, same with negatives. The process is the same. Um, you're going to have negative 207 degrees. Then do the 0.143 times 60 and we get 8.58. Then do the 0.58 times 60, you get 34.8. So that's negative 207 degrees, 8 minutes, and 35 seconds. Then to go the opposite way, you're going to take your minutes and divide by 60. You're going to take your seconds and divide by 3600. You're going to add those two together and you get negative 184.281 degrees. Same thing here, 3760, 3 over 3600. So when you add those together, we get 78.618 degrees. 
Okay, so arc length. We have a formula for this, and we're trying to find the arc length S, and S is equal to R theta, and the theta must be in radians. So our R is given, that is 8.5 feet, and our theta is already in radians. So multiplying these two things together, and we're going to put the pi into our calculator and then round to the nearest tenth according to the directions, we get 22.3 feet. So to use that formula for problem number 12, I can plug in the r, that's 6 inches, but my theta, I have to change 120 degrees into radians, so I get 2 pi over 3. I'm going to multiply that out, and I get 12.6 inches. Uh, next, we want to find the area of a sector. So sector area, we want to do... one half times r, let's see, sorry, theta and then r squared. So r is the radius, I was trying to use r for the radians, but we have to use our theta. So I think we had another formula, maybe theta r squared over 2 is another way to write it, so let's multiply it out. We get 1 half times 2 pi over 3 times 4.1 squared, and our final answer, 17.6 miles, square miles. And next we have 1 half, and then I had to change my 300 degrees into radians, so I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180 and I get 5 pi over 6, so I'm going to multiply that. And then my radius is 14, and I'm going to square it. So that equals 5 pi over 12 times 196, which is 256.6 centimeters squared, square centimeters. For 15 and 16, this is going to be angular and linear speed, so we've got an 18-inch bicycle tire and it's going 140 revolutions per minute. So when they give you 18 inch bicycle tire, they are giving you the diameter and our formulas contain the radius. So let's find the linear speed. Remember, V equals S over T, and S is what's going to take us the most work to find. S is the arc length, and remember, if we're going 140 revolutions per minute, each revolution contains 2 pi radians. So if you're trying to figure out how many radians you're going around in a minute, you have to do 140 times 2 pi. And then... Um, that's the arc length, which would be 280 pi. No, that's the theta. So let me change that. That's theta is 280 pi. S is the arc length, which is r theta. So I'm going to take my r now, which is 9 inches times 280 pi. And that is going to give me my um, arc length, 2,520 pi inches. And I am looking for miles per hour. So that's inches per minute, because that's all in one minute. So if I want to convert that, 2,520 pi inches per minute and I need to get to miles per hour. Uh, miles on the top, hours on the bottom. I'm going to go with 60 minutes in one hour. And then I'm going to go with one foot 
is 12 inches and then one mile is 5,280 feet. So when I multiply on the top, 2,520 pi times 60, and then I'm going to divide that by 12 times 5,280. And all together, uh, you should get 7.5 miles per hour. Number 16, we're going to find theta again, 2 pi times 140, 280 pi radians. Our W is 280 pi radians over 1 minute. So the angular speed is 879.6 radians per minute. For number 17 and 18 are going to be very similar. So I'm going to do my S, which is 2 pi times 6 inch, uh, six centimeter radius times 237, which will be 2,844 pi centimeters. Then my linear speed is that, 2,844 pi centimeters per one minute. And then I'm looking for meters per second, so I'm going to take that and convert it. And I want meters per second. So I'm going to go with 60, no, one minute has 60 seconds. And that's because I want to end up with seconds on the bottom. And then one meter has 100 centimeters. So those are the things that I have to multiply that on the top and 60 times 100 on the bottom. So I get 1.5 meters per second. Angular speed, you're just going to find the theta. So 2 pi times 237, which is 474 pi radians per minute. Alright, so next topic is solving right triangles. We're going to set up a ratio and solve for x. So in number 19, I see that I have an opposite and I want the adjacent. And that's the 64 degrees, the angle. So I'm going to set up tangent of 64 is 23 over x. And then I have to multiply by x on each side, divide by the tangent. So I get x equals 23 divided by tangent of 64, which just works out to 11.2. Here's my theta. I, I know the adjacent and I know the hypotenuse. So that is going to be the cosine of theta. And whenever I'm looking for the angle and I know the ratio, that tells me I'm going to use the inverse cosine button on my calculator. So the inverse cosine and of 24 over 37. And I make sure my calculator is in degree mode. I'm going to put that in and I get 49.6 degrees. Always use degrees when I'm inside of a triangle. All right, and here I want the opposite, and I know the hypotenuse, so that's going to be sine of 22 equals x over 19. Multiply by 19 on both sides, and that you just pop it into your calculator. x equals 7.1, and no units are given. So in number 22, I need to draw the picture. 30-foot uh, ladder is leaning against an office building. The base is 17 from, feet from the... Okay, that wording is weird. So let's see. We know if our ladder is leaning against an office building, here is where the 30 goes on the hypotenuse. 
and then my office building is always at a right angle and the base is 17 feet it should say from the base of the building and you're supposed to find the angle of elevation which is the angle as you're looking up so we've got adjacent and hypotenuse so that's cosine and I set up my formula and whenever I'm looking for the angle that tells me I'm doing inverse cosine so the inverse cosine of 17 thirtieths is and I use my calculator to tell me 55.5 degrees Sharon's bird watching spots an eagle in a tree she's standing 40 meters away the angle is 37 degrees 27 minutes so while I'm drawing this picture she's uh, a tree is always a right angle she's 40 meters away her angle of elevation is right here and I use my calculator to convert that into a decimal so that's 37.45 degrees uh, she moves closer to the tree. How much closer, we do not know, but she's still standing down there, and her angle is here, and it's 51 degrees 42 minutes, which as a decimal is 51.7 degrees. So we don't know how tall the tree is, and we don't know how much she moved. So there's two unknown distances. So the thing that doesn't change between her two situations is the height of the tree. So I am going to use a tangent to go ahead and find the height of the tree. So the tangent of 37.45 is opposite over adjacent or x over 40. So when I solve that out, I get x equals 30.6 and that's meters right so x is 30.6 meters now if I know the height of the tree I can find the distance um, from her second viewing point to the top of the tree so I can set up another tangent equation and that is going to be tangent of 51.7 And instead of an x here, I know what x is now. It's 30.6 divided by y. And so I multiply by y on both sides, divide through by tangent of 51.7, and I get y equals 24.2. So it asks, so this is 24.2 right here. It asks how much did she move closer so I would go ahead and do 40 minus 24.2 to find the answer to that. And that is 15.8 feet. So number 24 and topic 4 is to find trig functions for any angle and uh, use the unit circle. So I'm going to end this video and start a video for part 2. Thanks for listening.